So we're here with this lovely um, group of people, and you know, we're just really excited to be able to have this conversation. I'm very excited to have this conversation with all of you. I think it's really important, you know, as talented as we are and as much as we are as, as artists, it's really nice to talk human and hear about, you know, your human side, uh, especially in regards to being people of color in this industry. Um, so just really wanted to be able to have this conversation about representation um, and just honestly as open as we can be and wherever it veers off to, it veers off to. Um, I think it's a, a gift to be able to like have these kind of settings mm -hmm. and have this conversation. So I guess, yeah, for me, I guess let's just start with that word. Um, first of all, sorry, I'm Andy J. <laughs> nice to meet y'all. Probably should introduce myself. Well, I was ready to jump in. Um, we'll just introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Andy J. and I'm event director and also on faculty here okay. with Monsters. I'm gonna go by Darius today. Come on, Darius. Um, Darius Boatner, um, Detroit, Michigan. Hey. And I'm part of faculty as well. Hey. I'm Rebirth. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> 2017. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shout out my cast too. Freak Show, what do you know about it? Um, my name is Mariah Hawkins. I'm A Team co captain, and this is my favorite place on earth. Yes. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Jared Jenkins, cast of 2012, The Monster's Way. Period. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hey, I'm Nia Spencer at Freak Show, just like Mariah, you all know, um, from St. Louis, and I am a team co-captain. What's up, everybody? Lee Daniel here in Chicago, Illinois, uh, 2006 Monsters cast, road trip, uh, and yeah, faculty, A-list. Yay. Also, just in case y'all didn't hear, 2007 Inspirations, let's go. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's just called Inspirations. Oh, yeah, I like we did. Anyway, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, so jumping into it, just talking about um, representation for me, about how you feel, how important you feel that is, what that means to you, um, any kind of situations or anything that has like impacted you as far as that word has to do with. You know, I actually kind of want to start with Mariah because she has a really beautiful story that she shared and. Maybe we can jump off from there and maybe also just start with talking about what that word means to you. Um, I think like for myself growing up dancing and being like acutely aware of what I looked like, um, the differences in my body and just how I presented and how I was being perceived in spaces like this, um, that was like very jarring and it changed over time because I think I was becoming gradually more comfortable with being black, with being a feminine person um, and I think part of the reason that took so long is because I didn't see anyone who looked like me and if I did see someone who looked like me I think I had assimilated to the point where I wasn't able to receive them mm -hmm. and their gift and their spirit um, so when I got to a place where I could like do that for myself um, and then also like being in this environment and being on the stage and being seen like with Nia um, I came to a city Maybe I think it was like New Brunswick, and I didn't have time to get my hair done, so it was not. She wasn't late. She wasn't late. So I had. She was. She was. She was. I had. To, I had to give it to him. So I. Um. It was. It was in a ponytail. It was in a ponytail, and and that that Saturday night, I was like, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna take it down. And he was like, Yeah, wear it out. So then the next city in Austin, I came and it was like, you know, juices and berries and things. She was out, and I lived for it. Um. We did Robert's piece um, in the closing show that Sunday, and I went to the bathroom, and I was, you know, people were congratulating me on being the artist, and um, I was in the bathroom, and this this white woman came up to me and was like, "My friend has something to say to you," so I was like, "Okay, period." I just went in there to wash my hands, yeah, so I'm just right. sitting at the sink, <laughs> <laughs> waiting, and this beautiful woman with locks comes out. And she's like, I just want you to know, my kids are biracial. They've never, ever, I've begged them to let their hair out. And they've never, they just won't let me touch it, whatever. They've worn box braids since they were very, very young. And the second you stepped out on stage, they asked me if they could do that to their hair. And I, and she was like, and she kept like repeating, she was like, it's not just dance. And for me, like that was really affirming because I know that 
of course I paid attention to the faculty and of course I, but I think like I more so wanted to be in the position of the assistants and the people that, you know, seemed like prominent and like in close proximity to those choreographers. Um, and I just didn't see any that looked like me or any that I wanted to model myself after or felt like I could model myself after. Um, and so being able to like represent that for like two like young, cause I also at that age, I think they were like 11 and 12, I, would, I wouldn't have worn my hair out. I didn't feel like safe enough. Did you see it? Did you see it growing up? Like, did you see it? Um, no. Did no. You see that a lot too? Yeah. yeah. I didn't see. No, no, I just wanted no, no. to say, to say that to yeah. you, because that's such a good point. Yeah, no, no like they, yeah. Yeah, people are not seeing that either. So, mm. well, you're not seeing that growing up. No. So it's like, well, maybe I shouldn't wear my, like that's right. not a thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, w it definitely wasn't like um, something that was like, no and even like in my house, like of course, I think it was also just like a different time of like manageability and how can you like exist in society with like the least amount of resistance. Mm -hmm. wow. And it may not be like because it's just like more attractive or because it's like more well kept, but it's like how can you go to school mm -hmm. and be all right? Right, mm -hmm. right. And what's how easier? What's easier? What's easier? Yeah, yeah. And what was easier was to like not exist completely. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, yeah. yeah, that's what representation is to me is just being able to like completely and innately model something for someone so that way they can like hopefully affirm and validate themselves completely. What about you? That was, really that was so good. Yeah, you can, you can hold on to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty much that whole story kind of encapsulates mm -hmm. the, the root of why representation is so important. I think that it's, I'm trying to see if it's more important for children or adults. I don't, I don't maybe it doesn't. I think mm -hmm. it, it actually holds the same weight, but I think maybe just a smidgen more important for situations yeah. like that because, you know, at such a young age, you know, we're such sponges and we soak up all of this, the experiences that we have. And so that is gonna be a huge mm -hmm. moment for them to like hold on to forever, mm -hmm. you know, as a, like a, a spark of, you know, whatever it is that they're gonna do with the rest of their mm -hmm. lives. And that that is important and that is why it's important because those little sparks are what lead to like the big explosions for mm. one of them to even become a, a huge performer themselves or a choreographer, you know, like, so that's why it's, it's super important. So I love that story. Mm. It's great. Thank you. What do you guys just, what the word representation means to you? Uh, <clears throat> especially for me being a black male, I think growing up, I never really had strict, strict uh, dance training. I just used to dance on the block, you know, and I remember it would be, correlated with being gay. Yeah. Mm. Black men dancing, just men dancing in general, and this was in the 90s, yes, it, was yes, it was being being gay. So I, was, I used to suppress it for a long time. I remember there was only a group of females I used to hang out with because there were no males my age or my block, mm. and we would make up dances, and I would have to hide when my brother would walk by, mm. and stuff like that. But he never made me feel a certain type of way, but I just assumed that that was going to be the perception. It was, yeah. and it was, and I remember leaving, I'm from Philly, and leaving and going to college and finding really like, okay, I really love to dance. Mm -hmm. And then going back to Philly like 10 years later and there's a prominent dance scene there now. And I, I wish I had the courage, granted I was like 10 or 11, to stand in the idea of the arts, you know what I'm saying? But I love now being a black man who can show kids 11, 10, 9, however old, you are, however, old, <clears throat> however old you are, that it's okay to be as creative as possible, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I never really picture my life shaping up this way. Like no one told me, a kid from Philly, that moving across the country to LA yeah. is a version of being successful. Mm -hmm. I always had the idea, I, I knew I wanted to work in an office building. I knew that mm -hmm. from like 11 years old, like a lot of the 80s movies I used to watch, idea of success was, you work at an office building, you're a lawyer, you're a doctor. Yeah. And I got to do that and I said, hell no. Like, no, I did it for four years. I said, I gotta wear the same type of suit every day? Absolutely not, this is not for me. So the idea of changing the narrative of what is actually successful in life, yeah. no matter what your color is, but especially being black, uh, is I'm very fortunate and blessed to be able to call this space success. Absolutely. So, yeah. I 
didn't realize it until like just now how much coming to Monsters helped me be more in touch with my culture, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. or like seeing faculty or seeing students that look like me. Cause I went to a dance studio and I was literally the only black person girl there. Mm -hmm. So I never was involved with people that looked like me. And then I started coming to Monsters and I was like, wow, this is like a whole new world. Like mm -hmm. it's a different energy. They understand me. We kind of go through the same things. Like, I don't know, it just, it really opened my eyes. And I just realized it right now that that happened to me when I was younger. And I kind of was like the little girl for like the little young girls for in Mariah's story. Yeah. Cause I used to literally wear my hair straight cause I thought that was what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. Cause everyone around me, that's what they were wearing. Absolutely. And then my sister went natural and she started wearing her hair and I was like, mom, I think I want to do that too. <laughs> it looks good. I like it. And I was yeah. like, it's a lot of work. I was like, I don't care. Yeah. Let's do it. And I never went back and I'm so happy cause my hair is like such a big, part of my personality yeah. now, but I feel like it's always been, I just never fully let it come out for everyone to see, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. It's so interesting, I, I, even listening to that story about, <clears throat> and I think hair usually comes up a lot, especially yeah. in our culture, because it's, it's, a, it's, it's a huge thing. Yeah. But listening to that, I think it even goes deeper than the hair. I think that it's something psychological that kind of like holds you back. And it is about the hair, but it isn't. Because mm -hmm. it's just like, it's kind of, you put it beautifully, like being able to completely like, just be yourself, mm -hmm. like, and no restrictions. But I mean, obviously we know the history of everything and how the thing is gone. And, yeah. and so there's all these limitations and societal constrictions that subconsciously we've put on ourselves mm -hmm. and it, it definitely hinders our ability to fully express ourselves, especially in the, the artist sense and, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, but that's why the representation is important because it really, I think, unlocks like who you are and who you are yeah. supposed to be in the world and what you're supposed to offer so that you can do the same thing for somebody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. I'm, a, I'm actually a little insecure about the topic. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's something that I've, dealt with like my whole life in regards to not being seen for what I am or who I am because of how I look. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm light skinned with mm -hmm. different texture hair um, as a black man. Mm -hmm. So growing up, like it was a joke, like I'm laughing about it. People are like, you're not, you're not black, you're not black. And I'm like, I yo, but it was a joke. Like it was funny, like it was funny growing up. But now that I'm older, and I still get the same response off of no, I'm black is <clears throat> it hits different because I'm like, no, you really don't get it. And sometimes in a lot of cases, it comes from black people. Yes. And I'm like, oh, you really believe I'm not, too. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I started working, I get Latin a lot. I get um, that I'm Latin, but I'm not. I'm probably just as black if, you know, like we yeah. have the same bloodline, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm not Latin, but I get a lot of Latin jobs, and that's how I was introduced to the industry. I got a lot of Latin work. Um, and at first, I was like, oh, I'm the only black guy on this job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I felt good, yeah. you know what I'm saying, to be the one. But then as I started doing more jobs, I'm like, oh, no, people don't even realize that I'm black. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So that representation didn't even hit the same because I'm like, oh, they're not even realizing that's me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not the only black guy because to them, I'm just Latin, too. Wow. Um, so I, I had to make a, a switch for myself, like, all right, that's, that's not working in regards to like me hitting different. So I wanted to just start doing jobs and being maybe the one light skinned guy on the mm -hmm. job that's black amongst other black people, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, and the topic, topic is insecure for me because, or a sensitive topic, because we go through so much as a community, as a culture in regards to colorism. Mm -hmm. And that, that in itself is something that's crazy because you're gonna get something different than I'm gonna get and I'm gonna get some hurt different than you gonna yes. get. You know what I'm yes. saying? Um, which sucks. So it's, it's definitely a, a path we are working on, but rep representation comes in all tip, different forms, different, different shape sizes. And um, it's definitely something we, we all working on, but um, it's important to us to learn how to view it, mm -hmm. right. you know what I'm saying, and respect it. Mm -hmm. exactly. 
Exactly. Um, and so that's where I'm at with it. Yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, that has to feel isolating as well. I mean, I don't, that's what I got from what you're saying, because, yeah, and I think you, it, you hit something so poignant of, the, like, colorism is so huge, and yeah. it was something for me, like, when I was younger, and I used to get bullied by girls who looked like me. It wasn't mm -hmm. white people, it wasn't other, it was not even lights, it was some light-skinned girls, but it was mostly dark girls, and I was like, I'm so confused, mm -hmm. like, and in that sense of colorism, and like, then I, like, as I'm older, I'm like, well, that was a reflection of however they were feeling, and right. seeing that in me, like, you know, and so I actually grew up like big social butterfly. I was friends with everybody, literally got called an Oreo, too black, not black enough. Mm -hmm. Also played the flute, drum major, like who, what, what are you about? <laughs> like, what are you doing? You know, definitely that, that black girl who's like, you speak so well, <sighs> please. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. but it's in, in that same instance is like, it's also, there are times of I me mean, not feeling black enough and being really confused and actually going back to the hair topic, like, love you, mom. My mom cut off all of my hair when I was younger because she just didn't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And so I think I didn't even realize, like, that it comes with a, like you're saying, more than hair. I think I still have, like, oh, I'm going to get emotional. I think I still have, like, a some sort of kind of, like, self-deprecation because of that, you know, because it is such a big deal. And I'm like, I'm always in braids. I'm always in you know, some kind of protective style. And I definitely think that comes from that like feeling like they, they, you have to hide. Mm -hmm. And I think it doesn't help when you are younger. And again, you have people who look like you who are like also making you feel bad about the way you look, mm -hmm. you know? And like, I'm 42 and I still like carry that. And that's why for me, like having, <clears throat> coming here and seeing and being close to like, Shonique is somebody who's like such a big deal for me, like coming and the way she speaks and the way she, you know, she rocks all kinds of hairstyles. She did, does everything. She's an artist, she's a dance, you know, like the conversation we have, like I can honestly say that, that is like having conversation with her is when the, the first time is like, it was eye-opening for me to feel, actually feel represented yeah. and actually feel like somebody understood <clears throat> and somebody who I could relate to so I didn't feel like so isolated, you know? Cause I think that's like the, the worst feeling of it, you know? <laughs> I think I think there's something so important about like feeling seen in the sense of however I show up I am valid and I am complete mm -hmm. exactly. and I think also a lot of that comes from um, specifically like the thing about appearance because I, I know we're talking about dance and art um, but for me appearance was a big thing because I was concerned with impressing people who did not know right. Me, okay. yeah. right. who did, and also like, I did receive validation from people who looked like me, but I wasn't in a place to receive it because to me, they weren't the beauty standard. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so wow. I, I, I ignored it, yeah. you know? And so I think I denied myself peace for a really long time. Yeah. And I put myself at unrest, trying to like bend over backwards so that way like people would think I was pretty while I danced. Yeah. And, yes. um, I think like now, monsters, it being like such a diverse or, or diverse um, faculty lineup and just like the people that come. And so when I look down like in the junior room and I look down and I see like little girls with their hair out, not a care in the world, I just pray that it stays that way. Yeah, exactly. um, and, no, and nothing off, like no, no one can touch me. Yeah. Because I think now no one can touch me, yeah. but growing up, it was whatever you told me I believed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really important that we enforce, which is something that like my mom was all, you don't listen to me, but like she would say it, but I didn't listen. Um, <laughs> that they don't know your struggle. And so they don't necessarily get to, or they, not necessarily, they don't get to have an opinion on right. how you show up. Exactly. Right. Because they don't know what it what what it took to get there, you know. Um, our beauty is innate and spiritual, and racial, and like the lineage is what that is. I I don't understand. Even though it 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 occurred, I don't understand how I was so like susceptible to that sort of put down. 
and I hope that like if any if anyone like watches like if kids are seeing this that they understand that it doesn't matter what you see hopefully you see yourself for the vibrance that you are in actuality the gift is indescribable and it keeps growing Mm -hmm. and it's just because of who you are and so like don't let anyone who who certainly no one who looks like you um tell you that you're not those are my vibes. I also want to talk about something that I know um, it's talked about. So shout out to Annie and Becky. We love you. Thank you for creating this beautiful monster. <laughs> uh, you know, but there's, especially I know in 2020, when all of these topics and you know all these things are just really coming to light via social media um you know and especially when it came to talking about representation and culture and you know who's benefiting from it and whatnot you know there are conversations about the fact that there is a hip all of the hip-hop uh, conventions are owned by white people Mm -hmm. there's not one black owned one Mm -hmm. so um you know i for me I think it's really important to be super transparent about the fact that we know that, yeah, right, <laughs> you right. know, um, and then just maybe just set, shed some light in your opinion on you, why are you why are you here? Mm-hmm. As black people, like, you know, uh, I said earlier, I believe that Andy and Becky are allies, so that makes me be very, I, I feel comfortable because of that. Um, I also, to be transparent, you know, like, we have certain opinions and different viewpoints as black people. So being able to make sure that I'm being heard Mm -hmm. is very important to me. Um, And being able to also communicate in this kind of realm within Monsters is very important and I'm really grateful we have this platform. Um, But just, yeah, giving your thoughts and your feelings on being a person of color working in a hip hop convention, even though we do more than hip hop, but it started as a hip hop convention owned by white people. We'd love to hear your thoughts on that or your feelings. You want to you want first? No, no, go ahead. Uh, I think the biggest thing with that question is the idea of that both Andy and Becky uh, have no sense of ego. Mm. And I've learned that through my process of, I've been coming to Monsters since 2008 and literally first ever Monsters was this city. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just got nominated too. Hey. <laughs> you know, didn't get the show, but it's okay. Hey, but you but, <laughs> but I think coming from a, pr- a perspective where I didn't know a lot about dance, and the mm-hmm. only reason I came, I was telling Lee on the way here, is because I was on Culture Shock, and it was mandatory for us to come. So I'm coming. I'm like, what is this space of mind? Like I was just very enthralled with the atmosphere, yeah. and it had nothing to do with for me about hip hop convention. I was just happy to be here. I was one of those. I was just happy to be here. And then coming up through the organization, doing the show, and now being on faculty, I can honestly say that I've never felt, at least from Andy or Becky, not seen. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never felt uh, that the representation from my perspective was invalid. Um, Granted, there's some things we all can work on. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? But in terms of moving forward with the company, I would. I haven't had a personal reason not to support Monsters. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the, the, the space allows that. I wish there was a little bit more representation in the clientele. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think we can work on that, but uh, that, that, in terms of my perspective, I uh, really enjoy Monsters. I think you said it too, it's my favorite out of all the jobs I do. Mm-hmm. Anytime I get to do monsters, I'm like, yeah, I'll drop a job <laughs> to do this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I wanted to make sure that while doing this, it feels innate to who I am as a person and who I am as a black person yeah. as well. Yes. So I think that's one reason why, for me personally, I love coming to monsters in uh, in terms of being a black. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think I would just I would just say that. Um, out of all the conventions, maybe maybe even hip hop in general, it, coming from um, a wider place, mm-hmm. it can feel commercial. 
and I don't think Monsters gives commercial. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it doesn't give gimmick. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's the difference of, okay, no, it's raw. Mm -hmm. And that's where hip hop came from. Mm -hmm. It came from a raw place. Um, and so to have that, to have a, such a raw feeling when you come here, lets us know that, okay, we're keeping the substance of what hip hop is, mm -hmm. um, of where it came from, the culture that it came from, whether that's a black owner, whether that's a white owner, whether that's a Latin owner, like mm -hmm. if you're keeping that substance of what hip hop came from, then it's only um, natural for us to then want to jump on board mm -hmm. and, and be a part of it because of the substance being the same. Yeah. Yeah. Stay on board, yeah, I think that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the main reasons why I keep coming to Monsters is because every time I come, I always feel welcomed and feel like I don't have to compete with anybody mm -hmm. in the space. Because mm -hmm. growing up, um, especially being going to a competition with just white kids, mm -hmm. I always was the person that had to go against every black kid that we found at a convention mm -hmm. or a competition. They're like, oh, that's black girl. She's the same age as you. You're going against her. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just because we are both black. Like, I don't have to be against people that look like me. Mm -hmm. And coming here made me realize, like, we can enjoy each other. We can embrace each other. We can celebrate each other for dance, for being black, for just, like, living our lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that coming to Monsters, like, helped really helped me see that because I was always growing up, like, you're going against her because she's the black girl. Or if a new black girl would come to the studio, now we're going against each other. We both got solos. Why? Right. Why do I have to go against her? What about all the other kids? Why are we going against each other at all? That's we're on the cool. same team. Mm -hmm. We're from the same studio. Wow. Like, I, I don't understand that. So that was my mind set, I guess, when I was a kid because that's what I was being taught. But then coming Monsters, I was being taught something else. And I'm so happy. And I'm that I was taught something different because I don't know where I would be if I yeah. still had that mindset right. when I was a kid. Mm. Yeah. So. Well, she handed it to me. So <laughs> <laughs> I, felt, I felt like it was No, I've always felt uh, the same, a, a sense of community um, when coming to Monsters. I think uh, my first time was in Chicago. I think we both were there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just was such a new experience for me. I had never been to a convention or anything like that. Um, but yeah, Andy and Becky, for sure, they just, they just, they're like mom and dad. Like they've always had that kind of energy. They're, they've always been just welcoming. And for me personally, that, that alone already just sets them apart because they never have given me any energy of like racism or mm -hmm. s like separation. Like it, it's just always been an open arm mm -hmm. thing and, and that they lead by that. And so that's what attracts or that's what this convention attracts. And that's what's been so rewarding too, is just meeting all the similar people that mm -hmm. are here for that same passion. And once you find that community, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Like mm -hmm. your soul tribe, you know, and like you, you end up thriving more and more and now we're all mm -hmm. teachers and, and, and you know doing our thing and we're still here and so yeah. that's it's just it's the proof is in the pudding really it's really nothing to to say it's just really about actions and mm -hmm. I think that especially like you brought up in 2020 it's way less about what you're saying it's more about like what you're doing and like the energy that you're putting out and right. For me, they've always done that. They've been consistent as far as just providing that safe space for us to come in here and do what we love to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. I'm gonna add one thing. I think the most important thing for me is they allow us to bring our black <laughs> experiences to <laughs> these stages. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how many times I used to like, when I would take like Rhapsody, for instance, mm -hmm. and how she would make it very apparent that you understood where this step is coming from. Right. And it's way bigger than just this moment. And I think Monsters has allowed me, and I could probably speak for all of y'all, mm -hmm. the, the ability to speak from an honest spa space. Yeah. And I really, I think that's the, my most favorite thing about Monsters, mm -hmm. is they allow us to really understand, I mean not understand, teach the kids 
like where we're coming from. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you, you touched on it too about the history of hip hop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I would I would say I would say too, like we got foundations, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like who teaching that at conventions right. to to thousands of kids, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What? You gotta go to studios in, in like in New York for that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like, right. No, we have conventions with it, mm-hmm. and we're not just talking about the mainstream mm-hmm. foundations, yeah. but we're talking about Baltimore. Like, we're talking about different styles that maybe is not too mainstream or too on a, a global scale, mm-hmm. but we're pushing that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They're pushing, Monster is pushing that, and that's important. It, it may not be every city, but the, the direction and the idea of trying to make that happen is, is something you have to honor. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, th- I think also along along the lines of what, what Darius was saying um, is that like it doesn't give commercial and it also doesn't give exploitation because I think when the when the gift is so pure it's a business mm-hmm. and 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 capital is to be made mm-hmm. and yeah. that is mm-hmm. what com- it's it's part of it mm-hmm. um, and they're business owners and I think especially like in our in our case in terms of like the show, Mm -hmm. which like they facilitate this space for us to like be on a platform and and, and give ourselves and, and, you know, present ourselves to people who can change our lives. Mm -hmm. And I felt like this need to like thank them to like endlessly and be like, yo, I thank you for doing this for me. And they, and Andy and Becky specifically are always people to tell us that we do it for ourselves Mm -hmm. and that we we make our we make the opportunities, and that they're just happy to give us a leg up, mm-hmm. um, facilitate it, and it doesn't give like white savior, mm-hmm. um, which is which is which is really important because I think it creates very uncomfortable dynamics, mm-hmm. one in the workplace, and then just like as humans, right. um, and I I I I just love them. I just love them. They're mom and dad, and they're and they're responsible, and I think that responsibility shows through in what is pushed from monsters, which is foundation, which is like black <laughs> experiences, which is like, <laughs> so, sorry, real stuff, real stuff. Keep it real. <laughs> It is, and it just, <laughs> it just is, it just is, it's real and it's, and it's, um, it's pure and it's and it's for the purpose of like inspiration and not um, reg- regurgitation. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Good. Yeah. On that note, <laughs> uh, just any last thoughts? You know, I know we could sit here for hours and hours. Get some more tea for everybody. Um, yeah. Just any any final things you want to add? Just in regards to your own experience. Anything you want to say to the kids, to the churns? <laughs> no, uh, I think my experience in, in literally doing 2020, you brought a 2020, I literally sat with myself a lot because I was very quiet and I'm not going to lie on posting on social media and stuff because my experience as a black man sometimes, you mentioned it earlier and I wanted to touch on it about going through life, trying to be invisible, mm. problemless as possible. And I literally am that type of person. Mm. And I think the, the older I get, and especially with the way the world was in 2020, it, it forced me to have self-reflection and figuring out how can I make my, uh, me, Jared, become someone who is, is able to voice an opinion with being such an introverted person in real life. Like, mm-hmm. I keep to myself a lot. I turn it on for the camera or for, this, for class because I, I love to teach, but in my everyday life, I'm very like to myself. and I almost got so mad at myself that I was so quiet. Mm. I didn't say a lot. So I was, literally my voice was through dance mm-hmm. and I literally wanted to make sure that, first of all, tell myself it's okay. Like everyone doesn't have to be the voice, yeah. mm-hmm. but the way you actions, I like to, to don't talk about it, I just speak about it. So I'm like the way you live your life could be a reaffirming, a reaffirming that you are doing something great. And I always wanted to live by that. Even like going to college, I remember I would show up like this or be outside I went at Georgetown, DC. And I remember I ran into a coworker when I interned uh, at the 
Philadelphia airport during my summers in, in high school. And he was like, oh, I didn't know you go to school here. You go to Howard, right? And I was like, it was my time, because no disrespect to Howard, love Howard down. But my job going to Georgetown was to show you that I can look like this yeah. and, and thrive in those spaces yes. and to educate other white people that you can look like this yes. and be valedictorian, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I he, that, that moment will stick to me. And he, he didn't mean any harm yeah. by it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But yeah. it was very like reaffirming how people see you. In my job, I learned that sometimes it's not youth the voice. It's just with your actions. I was like, oh, no, no, I'll, I'll go to Georgetown. He, like, snapped his <laughs> head back. And was like, I was like, yeah, we worked together for three years. How did you, like, how did you not know this? But anyway, that, that was my point, is yeah. really being comfortable with who you are and standing in it and being okay with that being enough. And sometimes... Uh, especially in 2020, I was just uh, beating myself up so much. And I live by myself, too, so you have time to think. Too much time. And you have no one to bounce ideas off of, so you're just sitting there in your guilt. Uh -huh. And I realized, I was like, you need to do what you do best. Yeah. And that's the arts. So yeah, yes. I want to make sure that that is very prominent in talking to spaces like this, that you are enough, your skin color is enough, mm -hmm. the way you dress is enough, your hair is enough, your lack of hair is enough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Period. Yeah. I just end it. I also yeah. say like, um, <clears throat> you automatically put into a box, automatically. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, don't put yourself in that box. Put yourself outside the box. Mm -hmm. Do things that society may tell you you can't do, and just make it happen mm -hmm. if you want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Don't do it because you know I got to prove a point. But if you want to do it, do it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and take yourself outside of that box that society has put you in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'll just say that um, to sort of ta tack on to um, what Jared was saying about, yes, yes. Come on, yes, participation. I, I think that it's like really important that we as black artists um, emphasize rest mm -hmm. and emphasize like comfortability in nothing because I think we're constantly trying to prove ourselves and our validity as artists as people who can make money off of our art as people trying to like get it, or like even in a corporate space just trying to get somewhere in life um, and we push ourselves because we have to work ten times as hard um, you're enough you're enough when you're, when you're doing nothing because the gift is innate and it just grows if you let it um, and sometimes that means cutting things out of your life that don't fertilize your gift. Mm -hmm. um, and that just may be people who don't see you. And sometimes you have to see yourself. Mm -hmm. um, those are my vibes. Absolutely. I just want to kind of tack onto that. Just to piggyback. Round it out. Strong. This is a three person piggyback now. <laughs> um, just, I think, for me, realizing as a black woman, child and as a black woman that the things that I feel are validated and I don't need to be I don't need to feel bad mm -hmm. about feeling those things and I think that's if I could say anything to the kids mm -hmm. um the, especially the little black girls that's who I can relate to the most being a black woman there's so many times where I remember can, like sitting on things and feeling like I'm not supposed to feel like this or is it okay I'm feeling like this but I'm feeling like this pressure, or I'm feeling this judgment, or I don't feel like I fit in this space, and just not talking about it because I felt like it was not valid, and I didn't know how to put words to that. But everything you feel is valid. That word enough is, that is a mantra, you are enough. And reaching out to um, people within spaces where you do feel safe, I think that is uh, such a, it's really, clean. it was cleansing for me to find that and be able to, even this conversation, you know, just being able to speak and you're usually afraid to speak because you don't feel like you're valid. Mm -hmm. You are valid, what you have to say is valid, your experience are va experiences are valid, and there are always gonna be people who are gonna be willing to not only listen to you, but will understand you. So don't feel like you're alone and feel like you can't communicate, because you matter. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank we should you. do this every week. Yes! <laughs> Happy Black History Month! Yes! Every month. We love y'all. We love y'all. <laughs> Peace out. Thank Happy you Black everybody. Happy Black History Year! We're dancing in bands. We're gonna have, uh, Go Black people! Also, real quick, shout out to our Black <laughs> cameraman in the back. Yeah. Yeah.
Kenny, who we love. His, his name is Kenneth. 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 His name is Kenneth. Awesome. Thank y'all. Yay. Awesome. That was great.